Today in the news, we get a third generation refresh, some KBM, and two cool companies. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. After Polaris 10 in the RX 400 series of GPUs, AMD pulled a classic refresh to bring us their Polaris 20 RX 500 series. After that, we got a rebadge that was exclusive to OEM system builders with the RX 500X series. And now, apparently, we're getting another refresh with Polaris 30 inside of the RX 680. The rumors started on Chip Hell, which has been a source for a lot of accurate leaks lately, and while it has not been confirmed with AMD by any media, I would not be surprised if Polaris 30 was a thing. Let me give you a quick history of one of AMD's longest GPU refreshes because it's quite impressive how long they kept it in production. It all started with the Radeon HD 7970 in January of 2012. This GPU then received a small boost clock in June of 2012 and was rebranded the 7970 Gigahertz Edition. Then we had the switch to the R9 series which introduced to us the 7970 again as a R9 to X in August of 2013. And lastly, we have the 380X. Yes, it uses the third gen of GCN architecture, but the difference in performance is not high enough for it to be considered a different card. After all, it still has the same amount of unified shaders, texture mapping units, render output units, and it's still on the same 28 nanometer process as the 7970. That's four years of refreshes. So yeah, I think it wouldn't be so far-fetched if AMD pulled this again here. The good thing is that this new Polaris 30 is expected to be about 15% faster than the RX 500 series. 15%. That's not much, but considering the RX 580 is trading blows with the 1060, this new Polaris GPU should be the perfect budget-oriented gaming card since it will nestle right under the 1070 and still offer great performance as long as the price stays around 200 bucks. This GPU will also apparently be made on the 12 nanometer process. The rumors suggest that this GPU will be announced as soon as next month, which isn't surprising since AMD has been known to swoop in and grab the budget market when Nvidia releases new high-end cards. What are your thoughts on this? Would you buy an RX 680 if it delivered close to but below 1070 performance at a price range of around 200 to 230 bucks? Let me know down below. By the way, once again, those are rumors and should be taken with a half glass of water full of salt. There's already salt in there. I'm just going to add more, which I will now ingest because you just heard me talk about rumors for a few minutes. Oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I'm never doing that again. That's good sodium though. Moving on, it's official. Microsoft just announced Xbox One keyboard and mouse support, and they're doing it in partnership with Razer. We'll get to know more about what the partnership entails during the Inside Xbox stream on November 10th. As for when the support for keyboard and mouse will arrive, select Xbox testers will be able to trial this new support in the coming weeks. Most wired and wireless USB keyboards and mice will work on the device, but it will be all up to the developer to support it in game. This also brings in a slew of new issues for developers. Sure, they could just enable it and change nothing else, but we know that keyboard and mouse gives you an advantage. So will we see the developers take the route of Fortnite and PUBG and group keyboard and mouse players together, or maybe we'll see them do something similar to Blizzard? outright just not support the feature on certain games. By the way, I know that input converters exist, but they often introduce lag, weird glitches, and are basically considered cheating right now. Moving on to gaming, two companies, Nintendo and Bethesda, took the time to lift the spirits of two cancer patients by letting them play some unreleased games. In the case of Nintendo, two reps went to visit Chris Taylor with the E3 demo of Super Smash Ultimate, and he got to play it for three hours with a friend, his mom, and his brother. For Bethesda, they visited a 12-year-old boy from Virginia and brought a copy of Fallout 76, which he had pre-ordered, but unfortunately thought that he might never get to play. I really have to give props to both companies because it's an awesome thing that they did. 
Then we have reports that Netflix still wants to work on the Stranger Things game, despite all of the layoffs that happened at Telltale Game last week. The statement reads, We are saddened by the news about Telltale Games. They developed many great games in the past and left an indelible mark in the industry. We are in the process of evaluating other options for bringing the Stranger Things universe to life in an interactive medium. The game also had some leaks. There's no way of telling if this is the real deal or not, but boy do these characters look creepy. I mean, look at Will's eyes for God's sake. Moving on, I just wanted to recap on something that I said during the Monday stream regarding the purchase of GPUs. I loved my time with the 2080 and while I am certainly going to miss those quick render times and super high frame rates, you need to choose your GPUs with your needs and budget in mind. Some of you might not have a budget or just want the top of the line. Some of you might need some more advanced features like ray tracing or dedicated deep learning tools and some of you might just want a simple card to do the simple thing. You might have to compromise, but there are generations of cards out there. You just need to find the one for you. By the way, the 2080 does have some coil wind in the menus. That's the one thing that I noticed. Besides that, bellissimo. All right, so that's pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought of the brief history of AMD's 7970 refreshes and drop me a like if you can. You can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. Man, I'm really gonna miss this little guy. Thanks to Hardware Canucks for lending it to me. Anyways, stay frosty guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Stay salty.